Meet Pyroraptor. The fire thief was named in the year 2000 and it gets its name from a forest fire that cleared the area where the fossils were eventually found. The animal is actually incredibly poorly well known, named from just a handful of bones. The holotype is the classic killing claw, the number two toe claw, that's recurved, sickle shaped, and looks similar to those of Velociraptor and its cousins Utah Raptor, Dromaeosaurus, and the like. They named a paratype, and the paratype included a left toe bone and bones from the right side of the body, including a killing claw, a smaller toe claw that wasn't a killing claw, and an ulna, plus two teeth. They then went ahead and referred five more toe bones, two bones of the hand, and a right radius, a tailbone, and a dorsal vertebra. However, they did not figure or describe this bone in their paper. Not one of these bones was found in articulation, and the site it was found at had at least four other kinds of dinosaurs, four kinds of turtles, and an alligatoroid. However, the bones do appear to be the right size to belong to the same individual. There is no duplication of elements, and there were no other raptor bones in the quarry. So, I'm good with them being part of the same individual animal. I'm not really sure why Jurassic Park chose to go with Pyroraptor, other than the fact that it has a cool name and it's a great excuse to make a dinosaur red. There is no indication that this animal had webbed feet, that it could dive into the water and ice. Uh, there is, however, controversy around whether or not Pyroraptor is actually a valid genus of dinosaur. The problems are the, uh, the characters that they use to name this dinosaur aren't exactly unique. They're not unique to this animal and the suite of characters are not unique. The largest problem is because the material is so scarce. They have so few bones. But an even bigger problem is Veriraptor. Veriraptor is a French raptor named in 1998, two years prior. And it was named from also, unfortunately, a small amount of material, a dorsal vertebra and a sacrum. And then they found elements that looked like a raptor from a different locality, and that included a humerus and a femur. Uh, none of which overlap with the bones of Pyroraptor. In 2009, they found additional material that they referred to Veriraptor. One of these bones is an ulna. And comparing the ulna of Pyroraptor to this referred ulna of Veriraptor, it does look different. Pyroraptor's ulna has a depression on it. However, I have to hasten to add, there's no guarantee that only even belongs to Veriraptor, and it's always possible that that depression is a result of some character that develops as the animal aged. Should additional bones be found that allow a direct comparison of Pyroraptor and Veriraptor, then Pyroraptor will disappear because Veriraptor was named first. As such, the Jurassic Park Dominion Pyroraptor's name does have a chance of going away. Pyroraptor seems to have lived in an island chain most of Europe during the Cretaceous. This animal was around 72 million years old. At the time, the ice had melted from the poles and these dinosaurs were living on large islands. Though we know it from just a handful of bones, or footful I should say, we can speculate how long and heavy Pyroraptor was. It seems to be around 5 feet long nose to tail and no more than say 15, maybe 20 pounds after a really big meal. Think angry, small turkey. Though we have no evidence that it was feathered, using a principle called phylogenetic bracketing, we know that its close cousin Velociraptor had feathers on it, as did Dakotoraptor, another cousin. Uh, as such, it's probable that this particular dinosaur bore feathers. I'm excited to see how Jurassic World Dominion handles Pyroraptor, but everything I've seen and read thus far uh, indicate that this is going to be one of the more controversial dinosaurs in the new movie series. I'm Dr. Brian Curtis with Fossil Crates. Thank you kindly. Adios.